Hi and welcome to another 5 minute session and this time about the light path. And the light path is good because it shows information about all the rays that are bouncing around to create this rendered image. And when a ray sends out to the Im this image it's a sent from the camera and after that it bounces around. How many times it can bounce around that you can see in the render properties in light path and max bounces here you can see i have a total of 12 bounces but it could be a maximum of four bounces for diffuse uh, four bounces for glossy 12 for transmission and so on you can change these value to whatever you want but they will be a longer render time if you use more bounces so you try to get them as few as possible but still so many that you get exactly what you want as a rendered image okay so back to the light path how can we show what we have here and so on the easiest way is just to do a mixed shader here so i press shift a then i go to shader and select a mixed shader because then i can just add to diffuse here so i can add Press shift again and go to shader and the diffuse and that is basically some color that goes into shader so we can put in this here and this here and change those to like green for this one and like red for this one so we have something and then if I change this to a factor of one then you can see that this monkey gets red and if I change it to green you can see that it's, it gets green here what the other ones are they it's just so you can see how every ray is working so this one is something with a transmission of one so you can say glass uh, this one is just diffuse with no roughness and this is a metallic with some roughness here and if i now get back to susan then we can see a bit what happens when I, we use this light path. So all these that says is, that is either zero or one. If it's zero, it does not exist. If it's one, it, it exists. So if I take a camera ray, is camera ray, and take that to the factor, you can see now that this is now red. Everything else around, all the shadows and so on, and also the ear before, for this uh, Susan here is green but the reason that Susan here is red is because that is the camera ray so it sends from the camera and it hits Susan without any bounces at all and then you get this red color here when you're working with shadow you can do the same but a shadow is always uh, transparent so you need to exchange diffuse to transparent to see the shadow so we can press shift a again go to shader and uh, select a transparent shader and change that to red and see what happens if we use the transparent here then you can see we get this here from a shadow ray so then we see this is shadow but it's no shadow here on susan but on the ground we have the shadow and we can see that through the shadow ray the same with diffuse ray, we can easily see that as well, but then we have to change back to diffuse again. And you can see we get some diffuse bounces from the floor here and also from the floor here. And also some green, of course, and here you have more green that bounces. So you can control a lot of stuff and it's exactly the same with the glossy. Here you can see all those things that are a lot of reflective things in like the ear here and the hair, ear here <laughs> is then uh, red because it's glossy. A single array, that is a ray that comes directly without any bounces. It just is on point. And the only thing when you can get that is if you have a roughness of zero. So let's say now this ear is green here. If we take this Susan and take the roughness to zero, can see now it gets red because it gets single arrays so that is what you can do with this uh, so all of these are one or zero but you also have a ray length 
And if we take this is shadow ray again and take in the transparent, you have this here. Now we can use the ray length and ray length is how far the ray is traveling. So if I take, uh, put in a math, shift A, convert the math into ray length and put the multiply here. And then you can see if I go to the shadow here and I increase that, you can see it's growing. So we have dark here and we have bright up here because bright have to travel a further away and then get a higher length because the length is higher so more value also more bright this is a shorter value or shorter range so we have a smaller value and it gets dark so ray length is how, how far a ray is gone a ray depth is how many bounces you have on something so here we can put the to diffuse back again, put it here, and we can use the ray depth. And the ray depth is always uh, without decimals because it's bounces. How many bounces have you done? So I can use the compare, put epsilon to zero, put that to the factor. And if we look at the total here, so we can see then that this here is using one. Yes, ray depth. So only one bounce here. But if I go up to two, you have a few places where we have two. And if I go to three, nothing happens. And if I go to four, you can see this ear here, transmission. That is always the most expensive. So, and th then the diffuse, glossy depth, transparent, and so on, is the same thing, but only for diffuse, only for glossy, only for transparent. This is the total amount. So there you can see amount of bounces, could be three, it could be one, it could be two, and then you can change things like that. Okay, so this was a really quick introduction. The light path is really long, so it took more than five minutes, but at least you have a clue about what the light path is doing now. So it might be that I do a more in-depth uh, clip later on, but for now I just say bye and see you tomorrow.